Hello and welcome to this edition of Africa Speaks. My name is Joy Doreen Bira and today of course we are going to focus on the xenophobic attacks in South Africa that uh, some say kicked off two weeks ago but according to reports they say they, they actually started as far back as January 2015 when a Somali shopkeeper uh, was attacked by uh, some of the indigenous South Africans in Durban that is in Gauteng and it is from that incident that we did also see later on King uh, Goodwill Zuelitini who also came forward and uh, did make remarks saying that uh, some foreigners in South Africa need to pack up and go back to their countries. So that of course has sparked a lot of uh, xenophobia in parts of South Africa and of course let's not forget that it's not all South Africans that are xenophobic, it's just a few handfuls of them who are uh, uh, hitting at uh, the foreign Africans that are living in South Africa. But of course uh, let's now just take a look at um, King Goodwill Zwolithini's remarks and see whether or not he actually intended that people should now go against other African nationals. All right, now of course we've seen a lot of uh, South African citizens also marching against the xenophobic attacks, just like you uh, just saw on your screen. But now, of course, these uh, xenophobic attacks have recently been sparked by remarks that were made by the KwaZulu Natal King, that is King Goodwill uh, Zwelitini. Let's take a look at that audio and pay attention to the subtitles. <laughs> There we go. And it's those very remarks that uh, uh, some South Africans took to the streets and, of course, looting shops that belong to other African nationals. Uh, and the most affected people, according to reports from South Africa, are Somali nationals, Ethiopians, uh, people from Malawi, people from Nigeria. And uh, now let's connect to the executive director for uh, Amnesty Southern Africa, that is uh, Mpilo Shange. And, well, thank you so much for joining us live from South Africa. Uh, from your opinion, what exactly uh, did spark these attacks? What triggered these xenophobic attacks? Uh, thank you, Joy, for having us. So, you know, from what we understand, these attacks seem to have been triggered by what, uh, uh, by the King's speech, as you have just played a segment uh, from But I think it's also important to note that, you know, attacks on refugees and migrants have actually never stopped here in South Africa from 2008. However, we haven't seen the same thing as we had seen in 2008 until now, which we are seeing with this incident that started happening. 
Right. And uh, of course, we've seen a lot of people, over 10,000 people have been displaced and are now uh, living in makeshift camps around the police stations and churches and other areas. But uh, from your point of view, do you think that these attacks are justified in any way? Because we are seeing them uh, being accrued to the fact that some South Africans don't have jobs and so other foreign nationals have taken their jobs away. But does this even hold water? Be justified no matter how much people feel that they've been dispossessed uh, or oppressed or discriminated against uh, violence is never the way to resolve uh, the challenges that people are facing also this narrative that um, it's because people are poor and that is why they are attacking out others it's actually a, a wrong narrative because some of the research for instance has been done over the past few years by some of our partners that amnesty works with Mm -hmm. has shown that in most of these areas where violence does take place it's because of very, very poor leadership because in, 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 in communities where we have very strong leadership they've been able to stand up and say not in my in my not in my community you cannot attack other members of our community all right and of course what is the unemployment rate in South Africa today because uh, what we're seeing is that the youth unemployment is said to be at 50%. And for people who are between the ages of 40 and 50 uh, years old, they're putting the unemployment rate at about 25%. How badly has this affected South Africans? I mean, we can't deny that South Africa is currently grappling with the triple burden of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Those are the realities that many South Africans live under. But the, those also are not the reasons why, in actual fact, people would then go and attack uh, mm -hmm. other um, community members like refugees and migrants, as this is currently happening. All right. And because if it's the case, then you, these attacks would actually be happening in all the poor communities, you see. And it's not. Like I'm saying, one of the things that allow these kinds of attacks to happen is the, is the lack of political will, for instance, from our leaders to actually deal decisively with issues around the protection of refugees and migrants in the country, but also ensuring that, you know, those perpetrators and instigators are actually held accountable, that people are arrested and charged and then, you know, sentenced. The impunity that continues is the one that, is, you know, makes it the condition All right. Uh, my final question to you is that this is not the first time that these attacks are happening to uh, other foreign nationals, if you can hear me. And, um, you know, in 2008, the attacks were basically targeted at Zimbabweans who were the most affected. We did see a, a number of shots or pictures and images where some people were being set alight. And these were very, very disturbing images. And, you know, fast forward to 2015, we are seeing the same thing happening. And this time, it's not just Zimbabweans who are being targeted. It's just all over the place. And, you know, a lot of Africans are wondering, are South Africans more African or less African than the rest of the continent? And this is a very disturbing issue. But as Amnesty International, what are you doing uh, to bring this situation to come? Okay, thanks, uh, Joy. Just to say that, you know, even the 2008 uh, attacks were not necessarily only directed at a particular uh, nationality. It was everyone that was seen as an outsider within the communities. To such an extent that some of the people who died are actually refugees and migrants, but we also have South Africans who died uh, during that time. Also, this violence also affects others from outside of the continent, like Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, who live in most of these communities. So what Amnesty has been calling for is, the, is that the, the government must ensure that they put in place early warning systems within the communities so that we are able to pick up if there is possibility for any incidences of violence. And that if they do happen, that protection is actually provided for those that have been affected. Like the current situation, so we have our members and partners on the ground who are monitoring the situation and reporting back, and we are in fact uh, in contact with various uh, government uh, departments and other partners to try and make sure that the situation is contained, that those that have been affected are then pro provided with protection and that their rights are, are really 
Right. Are there any arrests that have been made, you know, it, even it, from it, back in 2008? Because um, there are reports that indicate that no, no major arrests have been made in regard to who the perpetrators of these xenophobic attacks are. And fast forward to 2015 again, are there any arrests that have been made in this regard? I think we lost uh, Mpilo there, but we're going to try to get back to her so she can give us her, uh, her final remarks. But now let's just take a look at uh, the condemnation by President Jacob Zuma in regard to the xenophobic attacks in South Africa. No amount of frustration or anger can ever justify the attacks on foreign nationals and the looting of their shops. We condemn the violence in the strongest possible terms. The attacks violate all the values that South Africa embodies, especially the respect for human life, human rights, human dignity, and Ubuntu. Our country stands firmly against all intolerances such as racism, xenophobia, homophobia, and sexism. We extend our condolences to the families of all who have lost their lives and which the injured a speedy, a speedy recovery. We appeal for calm and end to the violence and restraint of violent actions. Criminal elements should not be allowed to take advantage of the concerns of citizens to sow mayhem and destruction. Any problems or issues of concern to South African citizens must be resolved peacefully and through dialogue. We reiterate our view that South Africans are generally not xenophobic. If they were, we would not have such a high number of foreign nationals who have been successfully integrated into communities all over our country, in towns, cities, and villages. <clears throat> there are socio-economic issues that have been raised which are being attended to. These include complaints about illegal and undocumented immigrants in the country, the increase in the number of shops or small businesses that have been taken over by foreign nationals and also perceptions that foreign nationals commit or perpetrate crime. We wish to emphasize that while some foreign nationals have been arrested for various crimes, it is misleading and wrong to label or regard all foreign nationals as being involved in, in crime in the country. And that is President Jacob Zuma. He was giving his remarks in...
Parliament of the Republic of South Africa. That was on Thursday. And of course, a lot of people have reacted to those very remarks. They're saying he just said, but he didn't act and say, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be arrested. No arrests so far have been made. And so that's leaving a lot of questions unanswered. Now, of course, media houses in South Africa have been covering uh, xenophobia for the past two months. In fact, some of them even started in January uh, when the very first attacks were being made, uh, that is, for this year. Let's take a look at some of um, the analysts who were interviewed in regard to the xenophobic attacks and, of course, why they think these are happening. I think there's a lot of uh, self-loathing. We're talking about xenophobia. It's not xenophobia. It's, Afro, it's Afrophobia. It's also very unfortunate that... Uh, <clears throat> Many of us who have spent our lives in exile, we spend our lives being protected by the people that we are, we are attacking. Yeah. And the people in high profile uh, in positions who probably have not lived uh, anywhere, encountered any uh, of these people, uh, uh, it will come up and uh, uh, I mean articulate uh, uh, you know, these things. Every time you will hear the king speaking, he will be pronouncing the decisions of the community. The community have been spoken about the issue of foreigners. It looks we are hard to be, you know, to listen to them. And then it becomes, you know, something that worried the king to say it then means I have to say directly from what the people are saying. We, we, we really understand the frustration the king is sitting under it. It is not his own voice, it's the voice of the people. The problem is when those who are supposed to have been, you know, attending to the challenge of the foreigners are turning a blind eye over, it's where the problem will come the way the king have raised it. And some people believe, some people don't even believe those remarks. But the professor who spoke first actually did say that you cannot understand uh, how homely other African countries are until you have been exiled to one of those other African countries. And this is something that probably uh, some South Africans do not seem to understand. But let's get back now to uh, Mpilo Shange, who is the executive director for Amnesty International Southern Africa. Um, you went off before I could actually ask my final question. And my final question to you uh, is, as Amnesty International, what exactly are you doing to restore calm? What role are you playing in ensuring that at least these xenophobic attacks can come to come? Okay, thanks again, Joy. So maybe just uh, to say, because you had asked me a question around the arrests. So there are arrests that have been made. Mm -hmm. However, you know, one of the things that we are worried about is that even in 2008, there were arrests that were made, but the number of people that were actually sentenced in the end were very low because as you can see now, many people are choosing to be repatriated back to their home countries. And therefore, by the time these cases reach the court stages, for instance, then there won't be any witnesses and then they get dropped, which is why then that perpetuates the cycle of impunity then people are left. We are also calling for the government to actually ensure that they restore peace, calm, and security within the communities, and that they also do engage in the integration process. But this can only happen once there is court has stored in the communities. And then we are also calling for the government to actually then now reactivate the interministerial uh, task team on xenophobia because that will assist in coming up with a national strategy. This will address this issue from now on moving forward. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mpilo Shange. It was such an honor speaking to you and giving us uh, some insights on what exactly is happening in South Africa. And of course, uh, there's a lot of remarks and of course responses that are coming through. And we did manage to capture some of them. Uh, one is coming in from a Nigerian based in Cape Town and another from uh, someone from Uganda. Let's take a look at some of those responses. I strongly condemn xenophobic violence. I strongly condemn unjust violence of people from other nations. And I plead with other African countries 
not to take laws into their hands. Africa, we need one another. We should not fight each other. This is the time that we need to unite and work together and make Africa grow. Let's stop fighting each other. Xenophobia is not for us in Africa. All right, that is uh, Chinedu from uh, South Africa. He's based in Cape Town. And, and uh, speaking of Nigeria, Nigeria actually did give uh, South Africa about 48 hours to stop the xenophobic attacks, else they will shut down the South African companies that are based in Nigeria. And that is quite something serious. Now, we have Ernest Wasake from Uganda. And Ernest is a communications consultant, but he is also a former Big Brother contestant. And Ernest, I would like to hear from you. What are your thoughts in regard to the time that you spent in South Africa? And of course, what do you make out of the entire situation on uh, the, the attacks that are being made against other African nationals? We saw this sort of thing happen in 2008 when the very first xenophobic attacks happened. 60 people dead. Today we're talking up to 10 people dead. Not as big a body count, but nonetheless, lives lost. You also have a country whose leadership, the politicians and the people who are supposed to come out, who have said nothing that seems effective. You've had civil society leaders and a couple of people coming out and saying, we don't want this. But the main people who should be saying we are against this and we want it to stop now, those people haven't come out. And uh, the Home Affairs Minister, Malusi Jigaba, has been at the forefront of coming out to say, we want this situation to stop. I'm so sorry, and he apologizes to the foreigners who have been attacked. Mm -hmm. And he has asked the police to take care of these people at different camp si campsites and temporary shelters. But he keeps on talking about how we want to act very fast to have these people reintegrated in society. Who says that? How do you want people to be reintegrated in homes and locations where they were just being assaulted and killed the previous day? These people are not thinking through anything, if you ask me. And, you know, if you do not see any political will to end this scenario, in my opinion, then I, I can't expect anything better. In fact, I'm not even surprised with calls from different African countries to, quote-unquote, pull out their ambassadors. Because, again, when you followed this story as it was unfolding, you found that a lot of the responses from the politicians, especially the Home Affairs Minister and certain other politicians, was to meet with the ambassadors and assure them, no, this scenario is going to calm down. That just shows me that that's all they wanted. They wanted a couple of foreign ministries to tick the checkboxes and say, things are going to be fine. But they did not want to pronounce themselves. I have not heard anyone say, the Zulu king was wrong and what he should have said should be retracted. All I've heard is, well, you know, this thing here can actually blow over. So those are my thoughts. And Thank you so much, Ernest Wasake there from Uganda, giving us his views in regard to the xenophobic attacks. Let's just take some of your responses that are coming through Twitter. Um, Winzy Joseph is saying, South Africa should know that people are a product of the society in which they live, live as brothers. And uh, we also have one coming in from Macben Snow, who is saying, um, if you can't differentiate between terrorists and xenophobia, uh, he's actually responding to someone who had actually earlier on tweeted and that was uh, Patrick who said xenophobia bears all the hallmarks of apartheid unfortunately and there are no lessons learned and uh, you know yesterday there were reports as well that Boko Haram had given South Africa an ultimatum as well of 24 hours to stop the attacks and uh, I mean this is a terror uh, you know, militia that is giving them an, uh, an ultimatum, which is something that, of course, South Africa might or might not have taken seriously. And James De Prince is saying xenophobia isn't good. We should love and respect one another. We are Africans. And uh, we have... Um, good music who is saying uh you know 48 hours ultimatum is such a long time we should probably think of uh, making sure it's immediate but of course there's a lot of people who are reacting to these attacks very different uh, differently and uh, if you date back to the 2008 attacks uh, that did happen in, in south africa in in johannesburg uh, mainly 62 people were killed and this year we are seeing the number also rising it was five people in the beginning 
and then the numbers kept going up. But what we're seeing uh, with these uh, attacks that are, have happened in 2015 is that a lot of South Africans are accusing uh, other foreign Africans of taking away their jobs or at least occupying some of the uh, jobs that they should be uh, doing. And uh, there's a research from South Africa as well that did indicate that of every 394 foreign traders, that is foreign African traders, uh, a hand, 1,449 jobs are created. But when you look at um, back home in South Africa, they say that 323 uh, South African traders only create 740 jobs. And this means that either South African traders or business people aren't willing to employ their own indigenous South African citizens. And this, of course, raises a lot of questions. There are also a lot of economic uh, issues that are going on in South Africa. And just like the president mentioned, these issues are very difficult to tackle and this goes down to of course the minimum wage for a lot of South Africans and the fact that South Africa does uh, outsource human resource from other African countries and so when you do the comparisons you do see a lot of um, loopholes inside uh, the South African government of course that also hasn't played their part uh, the Minister for Small Businesses in South Africa did uh, mention some very hard remarks and she said that uh, a lot of people in South Africa are foreigners and so foreigners are given priority over the South African citizens but which is not the case because when you also look at the education rates in South Africa they're actually not as high and that is why a lot of Zimbabweans in this case have been employed in South Africa and of course other African nationals have been employed in South Africa and are doing some of these jobs that should be done by South Africans but due to the illiteracy rate that is a bit high in South Africa one cannot actually dispute the fact that these jobs are being done by foreigners. And of course, uh, let's, let me just take a few remarks here before we can wind up. Uh, xenophobic attacks, this is coming in from John Mark 254, who is saying uh, xenophobic attacks started early as January 2015. For sure, the king fueled the attacks. And Edgar John is saying, what has South African embassy, what is the South African embassy in Kenya saying? And uh, Mwinzi Joseph yet again, keeping together is progress. We stop this situation now so that everybody can keep calm. Now, the people who are, uh, you know, camped in the makeshift camps at police stations and churches in South Africa, some of them are pleading to come back home, but because they're not registered, some of them are working in South Africa illegally. Uh, that is the reason why they cannot uh, be evacuated to their home countries. And this is yet another problem. And, of course, the Kenya government also did mention that they are ready to evacuate uh, their citizens back home in case any of them is attacked and the same applies to Uganda but countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo that are in uh, unstable right now it's very difficult for them to even think of coming back home and of course now the United Nations is getting involved so we hope that at least in the coming week we can see some calm being restored to Durban and Johannesburg where the attacks did break out yesterday and uh, hoping that the king of KwaZulu Natal as well can retract his remarks so we can see some calm being uh, restored as well in those parts of South Africa. I'll leave you with a song by Lucky Dube where he says, We are different colors, different people, but definitely one blood. My name is Joy Dorin Bira. Good afternoon. <laughs>